Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. I may look a little bit different today and that is because today I'm going to be testing out the new Moda Prismatic Face Perfecting Kit by Royal and Langnickel. This just recently came out to Walmart. It was $16.48 and this is kind of like Royal and Lang Nichols version of the artist brushes, which became super, super popular um, for applying makeup. They're supposed to be comparable to like a beauty blender and apply better than regular makeup brushes. And I've always wanted a kit for myself. And when I saw these, they were so gorgeous and colorful, I had to get them. I haven't actually seen a lot of reviews for these out. And there are a few that Royal and Lang Nichols has put out by themselves, but I just don't trust when companies make their own tutorials with their products. Things these days can be so easily doctored and made up and photoshopped that I just couldn't trust it myself. I have a couple of other Royal and Lang Nickel brushes that I really do like, but something like this I felt I had to do myself. It wasn't that expensive, $16.48 is actually a really reasonable price for a four brush kit. It is usually like over $20 to get multiple brushes. And of the quality that I've seen with these, I thought it was worth a go. So today I will be going through each one of these brushes separately, testing out how they work, seeing if the coverage works nicely, seeing if they do exactly what they say they do. For experiment's sake, I have washed my face, I have toned, moisturized. I also put on my classic pore filler by NYX Primer just to give a nice smooth surface without any bumps. That way, when I do use these brushes, I'll be able to see how they perform on my skin in the best way possible, making sure that it wasn't my fault that they didn't work. First, let's start off with some of the claims this company has made. They put it on the front of the packaging here, and it says, excellent for blending foundation, concealer, primer, and moisturizer, waterproof handles, flexible, sturdy handle for precise application, and dense, soft fibers. Now, density is really important with these because the foundation is supposed to sit on top of them. Another great claim that this company has made is that these brushes are 100% vegan, so they're made from synthetic fibers. Moving on to the look and feel of these brushes, they look fantastic. Look at those colors, they are gorgeous. It is just a beautiful transition of colors and these bristles, they fade from blue to purple and they are so, so soft. These are super dense too. This is a lot more dense than some of the other ones I've seen. Some of them you can put your fingers in. This one you can barely, barely get them in there. The handles are flexible like they said they are. I'm um, not really afraid they're gonna break. They have a nice bounce back. And apparently these handles are waterproof so this coloring will not fade if you get water on it. Um, this is just gorgeous. I've never seen such pretty colors. Before I've seen, usually they have the black and rose gold or regular gold or silver handle like this one from the creme shop that I have already. This one is not as dense as these. So just for a comparison on the density of the bristles, the Royal and Langnickel definitely has a one up on the creme shop. This one right here is the size of the foundation brush. Compared to my fist, it's about halfway there. It's a really decent sized brush and since I have a small face, it'll definitely cover it all. Then they give you this smaller one, which is kind of like a blush slash bronzer brush. It is also in that same beautiful ombre rainbow, and it is also dense. This is probably the closest to the size of my Creme Shop one, and the density is still superior with these. Next, they give you a smaller one for contouring, and I think this is gonna be a great size because currently I've been using my Creme Shop one to contour, and it is just almost too big. I need something this size, so that's why I really wanted to get this also. Then lastly, they give you a super tiny one, which is this big. They say that it is good for nose contouring, so I'm definitely gonna put that to the test today. Moving on, let's get started. I'm gonna bring you guys a little bit closer and I'm gonna start applying my foundation. Okay, now that we're a little bit closer, I'm gonna start putting on my foundation. This is going to be very interesting because I have yet to do a tutorial where I am putting my makeup on in front of the camera. So I'm going to have a little mirror here with me to help me apply my foundation. And I'm going to start, just like it says on the box, with the foundation brush. It is number 801. Okay, so now that I have my foundation on, let's get started and see how this works.
It says on the box to do a big swooping motion while you're doing this. And so far, so good. I mean, mostly any issues that I'm having is my fault at this point because I've never used this big of a brush on my face. I really recommend the circular motion. That seems to be getting everything blended out very nicely. These are super soft also. Like, I'm very shocked. This is much softer than the creme shop ones that I have. Also, in case you want to know, the foundation that I'm using is Maybelline Fit Me Matte. It is in the shade 112 Porcelain. Okay, so so far I have one side done and not the other done. I'm going to finish this side and see how I think. I do have a blemish on my forehead and I'm going to see if this helps anything with the coverage. I really wish I could just do this all the time just to like feel how soft this is. Like if I could just like massage my face with this every morning, I feel like I'd be in a much better mood. I feel like things are going much smoother on this side of my face, which tends to happen. I have dry patches and I tried to avoid those while putting on my moisturizer and primer today just so that I could give you guys a solid review on this that didn't have to be so much based upon my skin. And I am by no means perfect, guys, in applying my makeup. I make a lot of mistakes, and I will never try to make you guys believe that I am perfect and knowledgeable for everything. I am just giving you my honest review on this product from my point of view and trying it. Okay, it looks like I have foundation on. I'm still going to need concealer for that one blemish on my forehead, but I will deal with that later with the smaller brush. Okay, looking at it overall, it's not bad. I don't see any streakiness from the bristles. I really do see a very even layer of my foundation. Comparing it to my Beauty Blender though, I feel like it's very similar, almost the same. I feel like using the big foundation brush takes a lot less time though. So taking the time off is a really big thing, especially if I'm running late. I don't think it's bad. I think if I had used a foundation that wasn't so matte that it might have worked a little bit better for me. I think that if I used a more dewy kind of formula it might have worked. My skin is usually pretty oily to combo skin so I'd use my matte formula and I feel almost with the matte it looks very, um, I don't want to say cakey but kind of very dusted over. Um, I would probably leave that mostly to my foundation type as I said though because it is very matte and drying. Um, I would think with a more dewy foundation that this would have applied much more creamy. Uh, let's move on to the next brush and see if it works just as well with the blush. Next up I'm going to be trying the blush brush which is number 802 to apply my Kat Von D um, shade light blush in the shade Samson and Delilah. Now this I can imagine it's going to be very interesting. I've never used one of these brushes to apply blush before. I want kind of an in-between tone of these, so I'm just going to apply them together, tap them off, and I'm going to try and see if I can get an even coverage of this. Sometimes with blush, it's hard for me to get an even application. And it seems to do okay. I don't think it's any different than my regular blush brush. I feel like doing your cheeks with this kind of brush is very mm, counterproductive. I feel like this dome shape kind of rubs against your skin too much. Now for the next side. Well, that's a little bit better. I can see it better with the sun this way. I just apply that all to the apples of my cheeks and a little bit up to my temples. Try to blend that out there because I'll be doing my contour next. Sometimes I do my blush first, sometimes I do my contour first. It really just depends. Okay, I gotta even that out. That is like the story of my life though, because I'm always like, one side of my face is always towards the sun and the other one isn't, so getting even blush application has been a nightmare my entire life. But like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. I feel like this definitely does work for a blush brush. I feel like I still prefer my 
other one compared to this. What I might use this instead for would be like the foundation getting into the smaller parts of your nose. Next up we're gonna do the contour which is gonna be very interesting since this is a much smaller brush than I'm used to using. This is the 803 of their brush. It is very teeny teeny tiny but it's not as small as the 804. Now today I'm going to be using cream contour in ColourPop Sculpting Stick in Easy Peasy. This has been my favorite contour stick lately. I'm so sad because they're discontinuing it actually. I'm hoping that they're just like discontinuing it and they're actually repackaging it but I highly doubt it so I bought another one of these coming in the mail and I'll have a ColourPop haul for you guys soon but uh, the problem with this is I feel like the brush that I was using was much too big so maybe this will help I'm just gonna go around my cheek a little bit with this around my temples and I'm gonna try blending this in first before I go any farther so this is definitely I think much but oh that's definitely an improvement before it was just kind of everywhere, you know? Like I was just using the wrong tool for it. That blended out very nicely there. I don't go for a super sharp contour. Just kind of like a regular average everyday thing unless I had like a big event. I gotta like go a little bit more there. I always go with light, you know? Cause you don't want to go too dark with this kind of thing. Cause if you go too dark, it's harder to get lighter. I'd rather just have buildable coverage. Okay, so we got that so far. And I always contour a little bit along my jawline because Lord knows I ate too much cake during Christmas time. So you gotta cover that double chin. Like, no, that didn't happen at all. I didn't eat too much for Christmas. My face always looks like this. Okay. Yeah, that worked out probably just about as good as my other one. I don't think my other brush actually did anything different from that one. So I'm going to start contouring on this side also. I feel like it has a much better shape with this one. A little bit on the forehead. Alrighty guys, final thoughts on the contour. I think this did much, much better than my original brush from the creme shop. The size is much better and I feel like it was much easier to use. It wasn't so big and cumbersome. You could actually hold it and blend it in. I think it did a much better job. Okay guys, then lastly, we're going to be working with the 804 brush. This is the smallest one in the kit and it is supposed to be used for using concealer under the eyes and for doing your nose contour. So I'm gonna give it a go for all of that. Okay, under eye area, looking pretty patchy. Once again, I use matte formulas and I don't think that that really is compatible with these brushes, but the concealer on my giant mountainous zit seems to be doing pretty good. So I'm okay with that, I'm not angry at it. Okay, so last testament is going to be the nose contouring. Now y'all know I got a giant like witch nose. So contouring is not a must, but I do prefer it. So I'm gonna give that a go and then I'll give you my final review on these brushes.
Okay, that doesn't seem to look too bad. It does blend out very nicely. I think I still prefer to use this kind of brush for the concealing like I did on my forehead. Um, I can see if I had a different foundation how it would work under my eyes much better. Alright guys, I'm going to finish my full face and I'm going to come back and give you guys my brutally honest review about these brushes. Okay guys, I'm back. I have my full face of makeup on for the day and I'm here to give you my honest review of these brushes after this first impression. Honestly, from the beginning, I think that I should have used a different foundation, one that wasn't so matte and drying. I feel like it just made it a weird texture in the end. So if you have oily skin and you have matte foundations, I might stick to using a wet sponge compared to these brushes. But I think as far as I can think of, that was one of the only downsides was the type of product I used with it. These are so soft and adorable for the price that they are. For four brushes that are this adorable, you will not find these for under $25 from any other retailer. I think that the quality is very nice. They're super dense and soft, and I think they're probably one of the better dupes out there for the artist brushes. And one of my favorite ones that I did end up using was the one I used to contour with. This ended up being perfect for me, and I also liked the smaller one for the nose contour. That looked really nice, and it also worked perfect as a concealer. I know you can probably still see the blemish a little bit, but this one's kind of mountainous, and I don't really blame it for it. Um, I do really like the foundation brush. I just feel like I need to give this another chance with a different foundation that's probably better for the winter time with dry skin and I think it would be perfect for that then. Overall, bravo to Royal and Line Nickel for making a brush set that's very affordable and good quality. It's hard to find brushes that are cute and functional and these are amazing quality I think compared to some other ones that you could get out there like I said I have the creme shop one and even though it is nice I bought this for eight dollars and I would have much rather have had for another eight dollars to get all four of these to start out with this I would definitely say is less dense so if you were looking at creme shop ones at TJ Maxx or something I would just save my money and go straight to Walmart and get these. I know that these are out in Walmart now and on their website. It is a lot less expensive to get them at Walmart because then you don't have to pay shipping. Overall, I would definitely get these if you're a beginner, if you are an intermediate user, if you're an advanced kind of makeup user and you would rather have the artist brushes and it's worth it to you, then go ahead and get them. But for the meanwhile, these are so adorable and so soft and dense, I think these would get the job done fine. These are definitely going to be taking up some serious real estate in my makeup collection. They are gorgeous to look at and I can see myself using these a lot in the future. Anyways guys, that was my review on the Moda Prismatic Royal and Lang Nickel Skin Perfecting Brush Kit. Thank you so so much for watching, please subscribe down below, comment down below if you've also used these brushes and liked them or have used other types of these kinds of brushes and liked them better. Anyways guys, I'll see you later, stay stellar.